The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Peter Johnson at wheatpeatrealagriculture.com, and we are going to talk about relay intercropping. So this is a really cool idea that came out of some innovative farmers in the United States. And what we do is we plant twin row wheat, so two seven and a half inch rows every 30 inches, and then that's winter wheat of course, do that in the fall and skip the other two rows. And then in the spring, we come in and we plant soybeans. And then we harvest the wheat, the soybeans take off and they grow. And in the US, like some of the farmers like Jason Mock, oh my gosh, 100 bushel per acre soybeans or more in that system. Well, can't Ontario do that? Well, of course we can. Well, maybe we can. not So this is the second year of the project and two totally different years. Really cool. Year one, super dry June. Our early planted wheat so outcompeted the soybeans, they simply died. Out of three sites, all replicated, good solid information, Two of them, well one of them in particular, zero yield. The soybeans died. Another one, nothing to combine, but we did a hand sample, five bushels per acre. The other site, a little bit later planted, 17 bushels per acre. Now, 2019 data, and you can see that the wheat was late planted. It never really canopied. So if ever you're going to try to do this and you're planting wheat late, this is not a bad strategy because the wheat won't be as competitive. If the wheat's planted early, it's just too competitive in Ontario. So we get less competitive wheat. Gosh, this year, 2019, it should work. So what is the outcome? Well, first off, when you watch this combine video, man, we have real challenges to combine the wheat and not damage the soybeans. And lots of people have tried different things, shoes and everything. We just use tile, that's okay. But as we push that tile down in, we don't always get all the wheat. So what we did is we did some, twin row wheat without the soybeans, I can guarantee you that whether you plant soybeans or not, you will take at least a 10% yield hit in the wheat. Because where we didn't plant the soybeans, we still lost 10% in wheat yield. So that's one of the things you gotta factor into it. If you do the perfect job, and by the way, if anybody has a row crop header for a John Deere 6600 combine, we want it because we'd like to try this one more year and get every kernel out of that wheat crop. Now you look at the soybean harvest and three sites where, gosh, we got not competitive wheat. What do we see? Well, not competitive wheat, dang, grass weed pressure. We can spray the broad leaves out. And as soon as you have that gap where you're gonna plant the soybeans, you have more weed pressure, but we didn't think about grass weed pressure. It can be horrendous because you don't have the wheat canopy to hold those weeds down. We did the best we could. As soon as the wheat came off, we sprayed with glyphosate, all those things. Nonetheless, grass weeds are a bit of an issue. And the outcome on the soybean harvest, well, we ranged from 12 to 21 bushels per acre. So on the year where we thought we did everything right, we still only got about 20 bushel per acre soybeans. Uh, could we have done better if we had a row crop head and you know we damaged the soybeans a little bit, but we haven't yet got the system where we can challenge 100 bushel per acre soybeans in a relay intercropping wheat program, that's for sure. So cool stuff, stay tuned, we're gonna do it one more year, find us that row crop header, but to date, 10% yield loss at least on the wheat crop and more in our situation because we aren't just getting every wheat head, we're actually about 15 and maximum soybean yield, gosh, looks like she's 20 bushels per acre, not quite we wanted. Peter Johnson at WheatPete, realagriculture.com, and whatever you do, grow great wheat and I guess great soybeans.